Kirkonian takes the if, this is the ultimate one. I'm assuming that, let's start with this. Who do you eliminate? Welcome into Tech Sags Rewind, presented by Specs in the Rollo Insurance Studio. We'll get to what we had on the show today, but this we just had a discussion, Nick. I want you to be a part of it. It's not even what we talked about, but it, it brought up a question. <laughs> Best TV moms. Nick, give me one. Uh, I, I I don't watch enough TV to even answer this question. Um, um, uh, Miss Turner from the Fairly, Fairly Odd Parents. I don't know. I honestly don't know, David. Never watched that show ever. Callie? I'm going to... Callie's seen Fairly Odd Parents. No, Mrs. It's... Brady? Come on. Everybody's watched the Brady Bunch, right? No. Vivian from The Fresh Prince? Not a great mom, in my opinion, because they changed the character. So, mm. anybody else? You guys don't know any moms on shows? Well, I was going to show my age, a.k.a. being young, but I was going to say Amy Duncan from Good Luck Charlie. Who was in The Office recently. She was. She yeah. was in The Office. She's a great TV mom. Great TV mom. All right. To the show today. What was your favorite part? Oh, gosh. Um, People are stumped today. Jordan Pugh. Jordan Pugh was really good. Nick, your favorite part? Uh, I actually like really like Pete Futak today. He's he's an underrated guest, right? You, you see, you know, I, I feel like he, he probably doesn't come on as much as he should. He's a really good guest. We talked about Aggie basketball. They're two and one, and they hit some threes yesterday in the KBTX roundtable. That and more, it is Tech Sacks Live. Yeah, obviously Lamar tried to uh, tried to speed us up. They pressed the uh, majority of the game, the whole entire game, I think, really. Um, and so uh, they got they got after us at the beginning of the game, but it didn't take long for us to kind of turn uh, the tide there. Uh, I think it was six nothing uh, to to start the game, and then we we kind of got after them. Uh, you nailed it. Uh, just raining threes. If we can if we can shoot forty six percent from three. Uh, for the rest of the year, if that's what we average, I think we're going to be okay, especially you pair that with the defense that we play. Um, I, I think that uh, it's a recipe for success. So obviously we played a little bit faster last night because they were pressing. And so um, I think that that's the way that Phelps wants to play. When Zurich got in there, he was playing fast. Um, and so, you know, I think that that uh, plays into his hand a lot. And so I think that that's why you were able to see him have the success that he did uh, scoring last night. Yeah, Justin, I'll be here. Here's my question for you right here. So you, from your coach's eye, um, what, are you, what are you seeing or are you seeing anything that, that, that translates or transfers to playing against, uh, 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 against better competition? Well, I guess what I'm saying is, look, you've seen the last two games and they've gone out and they've just dismantled opponents, but you knew you're better than them coming into it. Have you seen anything that makes you say, yeah, this is what they can continue to do against, you know, they'll be successful at this no matter who they're playing? Or, or do we have to st just still say, hey, uh, we don't really know what we've got yet? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think, you know, the, the whole adage of defense travels, I think that that's going to be something that's going to translate. Um, but again, until we play, I'll, I'll say this, I'll, I'll, I'm excited to see that Ohio State game. Yep. You know, um, I'm really excited to, to see what we can do against them. Um, obviously, I think the past two games have been really good just for us confidence wise um, shooting the ball. Right. I mean, we haven't how many times in the last couple of years have we seen us shoot the ball that well? I mean, there's been there's been spurts. There's been times. But um, if we can do that and just kind of gain some confidence, I think that that's going to be another thing. Yeah. And, and I'm not dismissing the experience. It's just because my mind is like. Where do the games that are going to make a difference matter? And I, I automatically go straight to Auburn. Yep. I'm not even thinking about Texas yet. Like I'm, I'm thinking about Auburn. But I know they got, they got to get through this game. I want to ask you, Tyler, because you were here. I think you're the only one who was here for 2020. Yeah. What were the dis talking points at this point in November? Were they? Did it seem as clear as it is right now for AM? Uh, it didn't. This, this one seems a little different. And, and part of it's probably the 12 team playoff. Mm -hmm. You know, because if there was a four-team playoff, you know, I think a and would, would would be out of it already. Uh, but they, I think at this point, maybe they were starting to, to take shape. Because I don't think anyone believed it was going to happen in 2020. And then you look at their record, like, oh, they only have one loss since early in the season to a good Alabama team. Uh, you know, they, they might. So, so it was probably about this point of the season where things started to kind of take shape of that conversation of, because this is when the college football playoff rankings come out. They were kind of right there in the mix. Um, so yeah, it, it was interesting, but it still didn't seem like there was as much hope, I guess, as, as this year. 
Do we expect to see, Nicole, a different kind of standing with the college football playoffs at A&M this week based on not playing and what some of the carnage above it? Or still got to wait a little bit? Like how they'll play? No, where, where they'll be slotted. Um, I think we have to wait. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, A&M is in control of their own destiny. They have to win out. Like everything they want is right in front of them, but they have to take care of business. So I think... This weekend, this past weekend was really important. A and M, you know, going back into the sole possession of first in the SEC, but it's messy up there. Yep, it is messy. Let me curious see how far Georgia falls. Mm -hmm. That'll be that'll be an interesting one. The, um, the all, all there <laughs> the top in the SEC. 12. They'll, they'll still be in the yeah. twelve, but like how far down are they going to be? You know, the interesting thing about Georgia, I, I think we all agree they've taken a step back. Yeah, but who wouldn't have that record? with their schedule. If you can put up Georgia's schedule, Nick, because they've had, like, outside of Florida, they've had the gauntlet. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, now, the, the early game against Kentucky, that ended up being, you know, a Kentucky team that played them tight, but they weren't very good. In that world, A&M gets in, but they lose the SEC championship game. You think that the committee would probably penalize them with the other 10-2 and two teams that don't get in if they were able to beat Texas in that scenario? Or it's, I guess there's still a lot to be played out. I, I, I kind of now I'm I'm really you know doing it. if your guardian takes the if this is the ultimate one I'm assuming that let's start with this who do you eliminate in this scenario if Texas A&M beats Texas I think Texas I, te where's give me Texas's big win they had the one home game against Georgia lost Michigan not a great win that's just not that just you know Michigan might is going to finish six and six I mean it's just not a great win. What else you got? I mean, there's just nothing there. You know, did Texas beat Alabama at Tennessee? Did they beat Ole Miss? No, and they don't have that giant win on the slate. Whereas Texas A&M, all right, you're right. Like I mentioned before, like I mentioned before, they haven't played the big boys, but Texas is a big boy. So like if you beat Texas, I think Texas A&M, that's the one where the, the, the committee says, okay, what can we justify here? As they go through each ranking slot, you know, they go from, you know, 25 up to one. They argue each specific spot. When they're arguing for, you know, the 10th or 11th or 12th spot, they're like, oh, they love big wins. Okay, what's Texas A&M's big win? All right, hey, look, at the end of the day, they they won the regular season and they beat, you know, Texas. There you go. So Texas A&M gets in over Texas. So eliminate Texas from this situation and then just keep on going right down the list. I think uh, Alabama, Tennessee this weekend is going to be a, a dialed up Tennessee. It's, um, why am I blanking here? Tennessee's playing a Georgia, Georgia. Uh, that's a, um, that's a playoff game. That's an elimination game. That team, even though Tennessee still has a shot, still kind of, I think that's a game where you're going to say, okay, well now you pop off that team. And then, because there's only so many spots, I mean, even though it's expanded to 12, as I've explained, you know, since this thing came out, it's still hard. It's still hard to get that one of those 12 spots. You're still only talking like 18% of all of college football teams, as opposed to like, you know, an NBA or NHL or any other sport where, you know, it's 50% of the teams get in and college basketball or something like 39% of the teams in it's still hard to get one of those 12 spots. Yeah, I just think it's just the nature of the of the of the beast. We're just where we are in the SEC. When you look at it, man, the parity all over the league is great. And I think a lot of it has to do with the transfer portal. A lot of it has to do with the NIL now because you can distribute our players can be distributed all over the place. But when you look at this league, man, this league, there's a reason why we're the number one league when it comes to NFL players, uh, when it comes to guys playing at the next level. And they're distributed everywhere. And I just think, man, the talent is equaled out. So when you look at it, man, from week to week, like we talked about before, each week is its own season. And there's going to be bumps along the road. And I think, man, and by having this, you know, this 12-team playoff, it allows you uh, to be able to overcome those bumps in the road, or overcome those losses. And when you look at a league like, like we have, our league cannibalizes itself. There's We have the best talent. We have the best teams. And, man, it's just hard to win week in and week out. That's why winning is so precious. Winning is so hard to do. So, man, just looking at overall, um, it's, it's one of those things, man, where I think football has been more exciting. I think that each week you don't know what, what it's going to be. It's the greatest drama TV show uh, going right now. Uh, and, man, it's just exciting overall. And I just love the parity within the league because each week you have to bring it. And that's what you love about the SEC. You want to be amongst the best. Yeah, you want to be amongst the best. When I look at these projections, and Billy and I talked about teams that could make the, the playoffs, it's very possible the SEC only gets three teams in this playoff, while the Big Ten is yep. almost likely to get four, right? Now, the SEC could get four. But yep. you, you see that, and I'm like, I still think the SEC is the better conference this year. 
But that's going to be a lot harder to win it in this 12-team playoff world if the Big Ten's got their four. What if the ACC gets two in there? Like, I just mathematically, it, you just start looking at the the matchups. What do you think? Is is the ACC? Or excuse me, is the SEC still the top conference? Yeah, it's got to be the top conference. When you look at the SEC, we're, we're beating ourselves. That's what it is, mm-hmm. man. And you look at the win loss record. Every win is not the same. Every loss is not the same. And when you look at the teams that that are are, are the games that teams are losing, Georgia, uh, Texas losing to Georgia, Georgia losing to Ole Miss. You know, we lose to to South Carolina, but we're losing to a, a really good note. For Dame team. When you look at it, the majority of the losses that we have are coming against our own brothers in the conference. Nick, will you allow Riley to sit in your chair and tell the people what to do? Riley, come sit down. Tell the people what to do. <laughs> you have to hold this button now, the green one. So make sure you like, comment, and share the video to everybody you know. For Thank those you. who don't know, that is Riley, who used to be an intern. And now he's working, well, I'm not going to make a joke. I was going to say, but he's a good friend of our show. So thank you so much to Riley, and we'll see you next time.